first of all, thank you uh, to the organizers of Kodiaks and Vlad. Uh, really good to be here. It's my first time in Romania, and uh, very honored to be here. So nice to see you all, and thank you for having me. So uh, stability, uh, the question that everyone's asking right now is, is it hype or is it real? Uh, well, we just raised $100 million, our seed round. Um, we have 103 employees and our communities of model researchers, um, ML, um, academia, open source community members have over 100,000 members. And we're building open source AI. We're the uh, only uh, alternative to some other big companies out there that you might have heard of. Um, and we're trying to make AI that can be used by everyone to do generative, uh, generative media. So it's big data versus big models and the transition to leveraging the world's data and making it intelligent. And there's been an explosion uh, in the last few years of uh, ARCSIV papers here. This graph shows the increase in the number of published papers um, trending exponentially, and you can see uh, on log scale, it's linear on the log scale. So there's incredible growth. So stability operates at the intersection between open source and community and AI. Um, we fund and give compute to open source communities that are doing model research, and we try and bring all these three elements together uh, to create this new wave of, of interest and, and progress. We've been, for about a year and a half, we've been funding several open source communities. Uh, you might know some of these. Uh, Luther AI is fo focused largely on language models. Lion, uh, based in Germany, are developing big image data sets. Um, Carper AI is doing um, code-based models, Instruct, uh, and other language uh, models with reinforcement learning, human feedback. Harmonai is an audio diffusion um, model that uh, we're developing. Recently released a notebook called Dance Diffusion, which will generate uh, dubstep and other types of music from, from sample libraries. Open by ML are working on computational biology and DNA diffusion. And Deep Floyd uh, is working on a... Um, uh, a DALI 2 type architecture model, which is being claimed. And then obviously, we have Stable Diffusion, which sits underneath Dream Studio, and uh, you might have heard of. So, one important thing in all of this is the compute. Um, and for about two years, we've been building up a very big supercompute cluster on Amazon. Um, stability, you can see there, is just uh, around about seventh or, seventh or eighth num uh, biggest in the world. Uh, with 4,808s on, um, on Amazon. And um, this compute is purely designated for open source model research. So if you have a, an ML project that has some kind of um, open source uh, aspect to it, um, you can just apply through the Stability website, um, and there's a compute request form that goes through, um, goes through uh, acceptance you know, criteria. You have to kind of state what your data set is and what you're doing with the model. Um, and then you can come on and, and train it on the cluster. So we're bringing sort of three things together. Um, there's the research um, from the, you know, the academic communities and the research communities, the infrastructure to train those models at scale, which is not insignificant. Um, these big generative models that are uh, generalist models, tra you know, trained on transformers, are, um, are com expensive to train. Um, and then product, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, which is um, kind of our commercial strategy. So we think that generative AI is going to reach a billion people. Um, and at the moment, it's very small, um, comparatively. Uh, we have, um, I'll talk about some of the numbers shortly, but um, the road there seems to be accelerating. And with traditional closed source AI, the, the ramp to these uh, increasingly um, efficient and optimal models has very much been a, 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 you know, a linear pathway with time. With open source, the community uh, accelerates the whole uh, progress and roadmap. Um, with you know, hundreds of thousands of people all working on this technology together, um, we're able to accelerate the pathway to uh, some of the technologies that I'll talk about later on much, much more quickly. So how big was the data set in Stable Diffusion? Uh, it's about 100,000 gigabytes of images. Um, that 
data is compressed down to about two gigabytes. Stable diffusion right now is one of the most efficient compression algorithms on the planet. It has the ability to recreate images of any variety from that data set. Um, and all of that data is seemingly stored in the model. Um, it's an incredible, uh, you know, the transformer architecture is an incredible um, invention and something that every day seems to uh, lead to new, uh, new surprises. So what are we doing with the internet? Well, we're making it the intelligent internet. We have, you know, S3 buckets stored, storing, you know, all this data that's being amassed every day from image to audio to video. Um, continually being um, uh, added to, and it just sits there, you know, latent, not doing anything. So these models can bring that data to life and transform it into um, intelligent models. We want to reach every person, every culture. We're doing partnerships with companies like Eros in India, where we will do locally, lo locally trained models with um, local cultural differences embedded in the model. People talk about the metaverse, but what about the multiverse? Or even the open multiverse? What we'd like to develop is AI for the people and by the people, with cooperation, not competition. So let's talk a little bit about the research um, that's gone into kind of getting to this, this stage over the last few years. Some of you will be familiar with StyleGAN, or Generative Adverse Adversarial Networks which were traditionally very focused and very good at doing specific jobs in, in one or more areas. But the challenge was to get to a generalized uh, state um, or generalized ability in the models. So in 2017, um, this paper was released called Attention is All You Need. And the researchers who were somewhere from Google Research and other areas um, described the transformer, which is a mechanism for self-attention within the model as opposed to purely feed-forward um, uh, propagation, um, and allowed to uh, bring significance of different parts of the uh, context into and the input data into one inference. Um, and most importantly, it was applicable across modalities, right? So this transformers work across images, video, audio. They can be used for lots of different um, tasks, which you see a tweet here by Andre Carpathy. Um, just a few weeks ago talking about how he believed they were the, the cause for the rise in generative AI and the current um, changes that are happening. So then some members um, of the University of Heidelberg um, started to work on image synthesis using transformers. Um, Patrick Esser, Robin Rombach, Robin's now with Stability, has been working with us for a couple of years. Um, and Patrick's gone to Runway ML and there's you know, some interesting uh, things happening there. So let's just look at what, why this is a complex task to generalize image generation. Um, what are the things that the model has to understand? Well, it has to understand local structure and texture rendering. Uh, it has to understand perspective and global structure um, with object consistency. The illumination needs to be consistent across different parts of the image. And, it, and objects can interact. Uh, where some elements of non-temporal physics are coming into the evaluation. This is something that GANs were just not able to do at the scale and where transformers and generalizations making it possible. So diffusion models, um, some important papers here that have led to the rise of diffusion from Jonathan Ho, Ajay Jain around DDPM um, and some other, other examples including the uh, papers from, from Robin. So what is diffusion doing? Well, we're training a model um, by taking images and increasingly adding noise to the images. And then we're training the model to reverse that process and to create data and essentially reverse the entropy from a noisy Gaussian initial distribution. We do this at scale with the transformers and we can um, uh, achieve parameterized diffusion, which we can to basically take a, a picture of noise, Gaussian noise, and train it on a text-conditioned uh, embedding from the clip uh, image models. Why is latent uh, space interesting? Um, popping up again here. So latent space represents a perceptually equivalent um, uh, space to pixel space. So we can create a decoder that will go directly from the latent space back into the image. 
and it also allows for very, very fast sampling and very efficient training. So then, uh, so latent diffusion, which was the, the original um, paper that was developed by Robin and the, and the CompViz team, uh, we started training stable diffusion um, a year or two ago. And um, there are some fundamental differences between stable diffusion and, and latent diffusion. Uh, first of all, it can do different, um, different size outputs, different resolutions from uh, reconstruction from latent space. Um, and uh, the goal was to achieve um, a model that could be run on smaller GPUs, so to train a model that uh, now is running on about seven gigs of VRAM, uh, which has largely driven the, you know, the open source kind of you know, community around this, because you can run it on you know, basically mid-level uh, GPUs. We're training, we're doing, we have two different distillation methods at the moment, one including a smaller version of stable diffusion, but one involving distillation where the models will get down to one or two gigs of VRAM, and this will mean even smaller cards and mobile devices that can run generative AI models. So the, the training was a bit different. We pre-train um, on 256 images um, for, a, for an initial batch, and then we, we up upscale the training to larger images uh, and several different, different stages within that. Um, changing the data set that we're using throughout the, uh, throughout the run. We're training four or five different variants of stable diffusion now, and we're discovering all kinds of things about the data set um, that are hugely important in the quality of the... the um, uh, and, and actually, less is more, right? You know, we, we are doing lots of aesthetic filtering on the data sets that result in the models being much more, uh, much better. So these are some early images from, from stable diffusion. Um, we launched it on a Discord. We launched it on. Have I lost my mic? Hello? Have I lost my mic? Can you still hear me? There you go. Um, yeah, we launched it on. Hang on. I think I've lost, I think I've lost my. Have I lost my? Maybe I've lost my. Use this one? Okay. Is that better? Yeah, okay, cool. So these are some images from um, the stable diffusion release that we did have a bot on Discord, and we ran it with about 50,000 members who were testing the, um, the image model before we, before we released it. Um, and this is just some outputs of the model from the first release that went to open source. So we released um, the stable diffusion model at the same time as Dream Studio, which is kind of our web interface through it, which just uses a, a, a kind of large scaling API. Um, and kind of immediately had this, you know, explosion of people making different projects, uh, all kinds of different things from, uh, you know, converting the model for use in Keras and, you know, TensorFlow and other, other uh, frameworks through to people, you know, developing fine tuning techniques, uh, doing animation, all kinds of amazing things. So it's been about eight weeks since we launched the model. Um, and Dream Studio, uh, so we've had two million users that have signed up to Dream Studio, generated 250 million images, um, and then the model itself, which we host on Hugging Face, has had about 250,000 downloads, uh, and thousands and thousands of projects that, you know, we, we see five new projects every day created from, uh, from the model. So that's just a kind of relationship that we're gonna be continuing to foster, we're gonna be pushing out new models, we've got a new one coming out in about two weeks, um, and, you know, we just want to foster the projects that are being created by this amazing community. Our Discord uh, community, which for Stable Diffusion is growing very quickly, now has over 100,000 members, um, and they largely, you know, are communicating around, uh, you know, development projects, ways to optimize Stable Diffusion and, and different things that, different things that are being tried. This is a quick snapshot of some of the uh, from the original bot that we launched on Discord that allows people to generate images via, you know, messaging. This is the breakdown of some of the, the terms that we used in prompts. It's quite interesting, anime being at 75%. Anime Japan is like a huge, uh, huge country for us, and, you know, anime seems to be, you know, this kind of huge topic, even outside of Japan. But then other interesting things like architectural, horror, fantasy, those kind of prompts. So, quick applications. Um, so, obviously, uh, you know, the ability of the model to generalize it allows it to create context in all kinds of different environments. Um, 
this example of a bird being you know, drawn in different styles, drawn by a child, drawn in the style of Starry Night. Um, and image to image is something that, that uh, is um, possible like, out of the box. So basically, you can just take an image instead of a prompt, and you can just add noise to it. Um, and the model will use the image with a certain amount of strength that can be a parameter to convert the image into something else. We're still guiding it with text, but we can use an image. So this is an example of that image. That's like sketch being converted into you know, landscapes um, with different, different styles. Uh, some examples of that, upgrade your child's artwork. So taking pretty dodgy sketches and uh, converting them into, into real images. Make good Christmas cards. Uh, so in-painting as well can be used in lots of different uh, techniques. We also have an in-painting model which is conditioned on a mask, um, on masks. So you can then apply um, a transparent mask in addition to uh, the text input and the inner image to then remove objects or change parts of an image uh, by painting in new features. And uh, you can try this out on, on Dream Studio as well. We've got like all this you know, interface for doing the masking and, and uh, removing parts of an image. So you can see down, down here the uh, dog being converted into a VR dog. <laughs> Some other models that we're training, uh, we're training a depth model. Uh, so this instead of, is, as well as conditioning on text, you can condition on uh, depth uh, images. So a lot of cameras nowadays have RGBD um, with a depth channel that's um, extracting depth data, and that can be used to to again condition the model to, to, to produce different images. Um, people are combining stable diffusion with some incredible things. So this is a combination of EB synth, um, which does kind of style transfer, um, and applying that to stable diffusion uh, processed frames on image to image. Lexica is a platform that was created. Someone, you can go and scrape our Discord uh, channel and you can basically just download all of the images that were ever created through the bot in Discord. So this guy did this and created Lexica, um, which just extracted the, the data from Discord, and he raised $8 million um, about two weeks later just to launch, uh, just, just to build Lexica out. Um, we have a, someone from the community who actually came on board just recently, developed a Photoshop plugin um, that allows you to do in-painting, out-painting, basically fully integrates um, stable diffusion into Photoshop. And then that, there are now three Photoshop plugins on the marketplace that we're all competing. And we've got ports to, uh, to other uh, platforms like TensorFlow and Keras that I mentioned, and people even getting it to run on Mac. Uh, there's someone who's got it to run on an iPhone, uh, does, about, does generations in under a minute, which is pretty cool. And I mentioned the, the compression thing. So this is someone who did an analysis of the compression um, stable diffusion. You can see the uh, 4.97K on, on the image is actually better than JPEG. And uh, it's being used now as a benchmark for a lot of different ML training frameworks and inference frameworks. Uh, Facebook or Meta just released AI template, um, which is a bit similar to a TensorRT from NVIDIA, uh, but basically a pre-compilation inference engine. Um, and they, they use Stable Diffusion as their, as their benchmark. Runway, a uh, partner organization of ours, also um, have video in-painting. So they use the in-painting model to do masking um, and, uh, and video in-painting, which is pretty cool. So then we're also introducing other features around the model that in, uh, improve the quality, like clip guidance, um, which went into our API just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's just improving the coherence on more complex prompts where you've got lots of different subjects in the prompt. Um, and just overall image quality has like, had a big jump. Um, Elon Musk uh, used Stable Diffusion to put his Cybertruck on Mars in one of the recent uh, Tesla uh, pitches, which was cool. So a little bit of information about the platform. Um, we've obviously got our data models, our, our data teams, the research models, and then our kind of API at scale. <clears throat> um, so we've got some things that we're launching over the next few months. Um, I mentioned the models themselves. We're launching three different variants of Stable Diffusion. We're going to be launching a new 1.6 in about two weeks' time, which is trained on an aesthetic data set, which is a big, a big jump in quality. I mentioned the smaller models. We're also releasing bigger models that have other architectures. Um, and then we're releasing some features in the API that will 
allow people to do um, some other quite cool things. So the first of those, which is a really big one, is fine tuning. So um, commercially, there's a, I talked about leveraging the world's data and making it intelligent. The, fine, the ability to fine tune and, and train the models on data sets that are behind closed doors is a huge commercial um, strategy, but also it's hugely exciting from a community perspective. People can take five selfies of themselves and in 10 minutes can create a custom model that they can put themselves into, you know, Superman or, you know, Iron Man, different characters. And you can use that to, you know, to do anything. You could do it with product design, fashion, um, architecture, any, any concept that you have a, a custom data set for. And, the, and there are different training approaches for some of the, for the, some of the smaller approaches like Dream Booth um, uh, and Text and Inversion. You're maybe using five to 10 images. For, um, for and for hyper networks, you know, maybe slightly larger data sets, and then you've got big training runs where you're running maybe on two million or ten million or fifty million uh, images. Um, companies like Adobe that have you know their own Behance, Behance has like a hundred billion images in it. Um, so training data sets on those big, um, you know, those big other uh, image sets is particularly interesting. So Dreambooth, um, Dreambooth is an interesting approach. It uh, fine tunes the model on a set of input images and it changes the underlying weights. Um, there are some upsides and downsides. The upsides is very quick. We can, we can train a new model, as I mentioned, in less than 10 minutes, one to 2,000 steps. Um, but it also changes the underlying weights. You can lose context in the underlying model. Um, there are a couple of videos here just of some Dream Booth um, examples. Um, people, uh, this is a guy who's trained in his face into the model, uh, showing basic rotation. Um, we've also got Joe Penner, who um, uh, trained a model on his face, and this is a quick animation from, from that. I'll show you another video from, from him in one second. Um, so then this is, uh, so this is a video from Joe uh, about the launch. So we had a launch event recently in San Francisco, and he did a, a quick kind of two-minute video about, about the launches to Stable Diffusion, but also fine-tuning. Okay, hello, hello. Very exciting moment in, I would say, the history of technology, the history of artificial intelligence. That is the release of Stable Diffusion. And Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion. So Stable Diffusion, I think, is going to really shake up the AI game. of creativity, collaboration, and open improvement. It has absolutely blown up recently. I'll just explain real quick. Hey, you got this big model, you can type in anything. You get a picture, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna type my name in, and like, nothing comes up. I trained a thing for a week and a half on it looking like me, but guess what? On my drive down, this guy figured out how to do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, more to go. Got buffering issues. <laughs> I think we might kill that one. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's going to recover. We'll give it a second. Okay, well, it's a shame. I'll send you all the link and you can have a look at it afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool video. Here we go. Here we go.
What can I do? What can I do? Okay, hello, hello. Very exciting. Now we're doing it again. Okay. Moment. So, um... So yeah, really cool video from Joe, um, who's a really big YouTuber actually, and he he you know he just got involved in the community when we did the release, um, and he's made some awesome stuff. So then, um, so yeah, other fine tuning methods. Google's released Unitune, um, which is a similar tuning technique, um, and then Hyper Networks I mentioned, which. Um, is a, a really interesting technique that allows us to keep the underlying weights um, unaffected and have a secondary network that we can use to inject concepts into the underlying model. I think hypernetworks, um, which was, the original paper was written by David Ha, who's now um, uh, with Stability, um, but he um, have been some other versions of hypernetworks that have been um, kind of being developed in the community, and they're really interesting, um, really interesting architecture. So, as I mentioned, training the models on big partnerships for us is really important, but it also, you know, that goes out to localization. You know, there are no models in, you know, Indian languages at the moment, other, you know, Japanese, Chinese. Baidu has just released, released a Chinese model, actually. Um, but it's amazing how little models there are in other, um, in other languages, which we want to try and change. So animation is our next big... Um, uh, next big thing, it's my passion, kind of my original passion. I came from the Disco Diffusion community. Um, I was building tooling for Disco Diffusion and trying to refactor some of the notebooks and modularize them. Um, working with Adam Gandamu, who was one of the original maintainers of the Dis Disco notebook. Um, and animation is a hugely uh, important you know, step. Uh, things like video diffusion and 3D diffusion, which I'll talk about later on, the, probably 12 months away, but we can animate AI art right now. Um, there are some really interesting notebooks out there like the forum, um, which allow people to take AI images and, and move through them in, uh, in 3D space. So we're using a depth model that estimates the depth structure of an image, and then we use that to do very small translations and rotations in 3D to the image, and then we feed that back into the model as an, as an init image. And if we do that successively, um, we can create the illusion of, you know, moving through landscapes and flying through different environments. So Dream Studio is a tool that's really built to allow you to do that um, with, you know, t a timeline where you can put prompts out over, a over a, you know, different time regions and also drive um, things like prompt weight from, the, uh, from audio activity. The API will allow you to generate, you know, animations uh, very quickly. Um, we're currently getting like image inference times down to about one second for a 512 image, um, and obviously trying to compete with the community uh, that's, that's also working on this like, at the same time. So yeah, it's Dream Studio basically has an interface that we're launching probably in December, it allows you to like do data-driven graph uh, kind of node editing uh, and visualize camera paths in 3D um, to kind of visualize your animation and plan it. Uh, there's a little launch video, should be. Let's see if that's going to load. So this is an example um, from Adam of uh, his favorite character, Mark Zuckerberg, um, that's being successfully fed back through um, iterations. The quality is actually really low on this one. It's not a model, it's actually uh, it's a compression on Google Drive. But you can kind of get the idea of new concepts coming into the image over time. Running out of time, so I'm going to just show you one couple more things really quickly. This is the some more examples of animation from uh, from Dream Studio Pro, which we're launching in December, um, and then I'll wrap up after this one. 
Introducing Dream Studio Pro, the next frontier of AI media creation. Powered by Stable Diffusion, Dream Studio Pro represents a new paradigm in creative expression. Explore infinite latent space, conjure new realities, and create powerful cinematic visuals in just minutes. Connect with your audience like never before with Dream Studio Pro's incredible versatility. Translate emotional stories and poetry into compelling imagery. Create an infinite variety of nuanced emotional animations. Use text prompts together with music to drive Dream Studio Pro's audio processing unit and create powerful audio reactive music videos driven by AI. With Dream Studio Pro and Stable Diffusion, filmmakers can go from a creative concept to a short animated film in just minutes. Draft and visualize your script with our powerful storyboard mode. Send your storyboards into the timeline for versatile scene composition, precision camera controls, and groundbreaking latent space transition effects. While Dream Studio Pro is a standalone application, it is also a perfect addition to robust visual effects asset workflows. Create fully realized environments, asset textures, and motion-matched composition layers with 3D transformations and precise masking. All of the versatile API functionality is built from the ground up on our robust cloud platform. This way, studios and software partners can easily integrate Dream Studio Pro capabilities into their own pipelines. Dream Studio Pro is compatible with proprietary, fine-tuned image models, allowing studios, game developers, and content creators to integrate DS Pro into their own production pipelines, with video diffusion and audio diffusion models coming soon. Dream Studio Pro extends our leadership into anime. So I'm going to quickly jump Introducing forward. Dream. Um, I haven't got, I've run out of time, so I'm going to be really quick on the last few things. So audio, uh, we've, go and check out Dance Diffusion. I, I won't play the samples, but we're getting like now getting like production grade audio of that. Um, the Harmon I team is doing some amazing work. And th these are all open Discord communities, right, that anyone can get involved in. Um, there are some incredible researchers there, and um, please go and meet them. 3D, uh, using Dream Fusion, which is basically like uh, text, uh, 2D to 3D conversion from a single image. Um, we're seeing open source projects now to create 3D models from 2D images generated by Dream Studio, Stable Diffusion. Um, and we're launching our platform site next week, which is basically a full developer platform uh, for people wanting to get into uh, using the API with a lot of different tooling examples like clip guidance and masks and so on. So this is a, like, th th there's loads of information on the internet, but we're trying to centralize it all and, you know, trying to, uh, trying to keep it keep it a bit coordinated. Um, I haven't really got time for, for all of the integrations, but um, there are some people doing incredible things with video in-painting, um, touch designer, 3D spherical imagery, um, using 3D environments um, as inner imagery to generate new outputs, integration with Nerf for changing styles of Nerf models. Um, and video diffusion, which is you know, going to be a really big thing. Uh, the technology is not there yet. There's some big sort of splashes being made by Meta and other people, but um, you know, next year is going to be a big year for, for video diffusion. Um, so just to wrap it all up, um, you know, new capabilities and ideas come from you know, the community. They don't come just from us, right? The community is much bigger than us, and we want to support that and, and grow it. Um, you know, we're going to keep giving models away, improving the models, and just letting the community build on top of that because it just creates this incredible innovation. Um, so what seems poss not possible now that might be possible in the near future, or what seems easy now that um, might be harder than we think? So these are some questions, and thank you very much for your time. <laughs>